Good evening dear friends. Welcome to our new video. This is a video to explain how to learn about a government scheme in detail, in an analytical manner and how to memorize it for your prelims and for mains. As you know, government schemes are a most important area as far as a civil service aspirant is concerned. Even though almost all questions in UPSC civil service examinations or especially prelims are supposed to be unpredictable, you can predict certain areas from where you can expect more questions. And this year probably there can be more questions from government schemes because the incumbent government of the country is, has run their last full budget this year in 2000. 1718. They are expected to face the general elections before the next budget or after the just after the next budget so that they, they would won't get enough time to present a complete budget. So UPSC question papers are usually considered as a platform to interact with the Indian intelligentsia because the educated people of this country will be by and large attempting the exam so that if you are introducing government schemes as in question paper that will be helpful for the government also and this particular reason is actually reinforcing the possibilities of expecting more questions from the government schemes part of economics in this year you can specifically categorize it into economic current affairs and from that you can expect certain questions this year. So around 596 active schemes are there which is done pan-India grounds. On a pan-India basis there is around 596 schemes which is run currently. That means a civil service aspirant is supposed to go through all these schemes and must be in a position to answer whatever is being asked from any of these schemes. So you may feel it very difficult and you may feel that like how to memorize all these things. So if you are going for a mugging up strategy that means if you are going through some customized materials where you will get the details of all these of all these government schemes compiled together and if you are going through that kind of a method it won't be effective because it will be impossible for you to recollect all these things during your examination especially in a tensed scenario in which you are attending your exams. So how to learn it in an effective manner that is what we are trying to explain in this video. For that we have taken Pradhan Mandri Krishi Senjai Yojana as an example. So you might have heard of Pradhan Mandri Krishi Senjai Yojana which is a very important scheme introduced by the current government. So what is it all about? Conventionally, you will be marking up the details like it will be uh, introduced and it will be implemented in the country by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and it is typically a micro irrigation program and the allocation for this particular scheme is so and so. These kind of factual aspects will be marked up and you will be going to face the examination and you will get a very different statement in the exam practically which you might not have noticed. So how to learn about Pradhan Mandri Krishi Senjai Gojana? So to begin with, you have to understand what is the context in which Pradhan Mandri Krishi Senjai Yojana is being introduced in this country. So water use efficiency, WUE, this is the term which you are supposed to focus when you are talking about Pradhan Mandri Krishi Senjai Yojana. So you'll be wondering what uh, some parameter like water use efficiency can do about a government scheme. Please understand water use efficiency is the efficiency or ability of a plant to convert the water which is irrigated water which is available for that plant into product or the grain which is produced out of that plant. That means the effectiveness of irrigation is most important to have better water use efficiency. And you know in our country just 48% of the total cultivable land is under irrigation. And most importantly you have to notice the fact that 
irrigated land is always more productive than unirrigated lands. That means if you are irrigating your lands more, that means your country's agricultural productivity will be increased. But water is a scarce resource. That means the availability of water in this country is not uniform and you have to allocate it wisely to ensure more productivity in the fields. So water use efficiency is a key term. That means to improve water use efficiency is highly important for any country. And please note this fact, water use efficiency in India is just between 30 and 40 percentage that is one of the lowest in contemporary world. Consider China which is our neighbor and is another Asian country which has a 55 percentage water efficiency when compared to India's 30 to 40 percentage, 55 percentage is much more effective than our country. That means this scenario requires a paradigm shift that means our water conservation strategies and our irrigation methodology and technology must be upgraded in such a manner that water use efficiency of the country will be improved so for that an innovative irrigation technology is to be introduced in India's agricultural land India's cultivable land and Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sinjai Yojana is focusing on such a paradigm shift that is to convert India's irrigation into micro irrigation method and what is the importance of micro irrigation method you just go through the facts that is if you are introducing micro irrigation in your fields okay that means there will be 40 to 70 percentage increase in the water use efficiency of the country that means 40 to 70 percentage of irrigated water water which you are using for irrigation will be saved if you are following the method or technology of micro irrigation along with that 10 to 17 percentage of energy you know energy is a very prized procession for an energy starving nation like India which is facing 18 hours power cut in rural part of the country where to, to save that means you are creating a megawatt of energy that means without constructing more dams without spending more money you are simply saving 10 to 17 percentage of the energy consumed by that is also a subsidized commodity which is utilized for agriculture in an unproductive manner which is saved 10 to 17 percentage again there is a 15 to 50 percentage improvement in the consumption of fertilizer that means a reduced consumption of 15 to 50 percentage of agriculture again another subsidized commodity subsidy bills to agriculture that means fertilizer subsidy of this country is actually very high that means we are spending a lot of money on fertilizer subsidy 15 to 50 percentage fertilizer consumption can be reduced if you are properly irrigating your field using micro irrigation methods now 30 to 40 percentage labor cost can be reduced if you are irrigating your land properly using a micro irrigation technology that means in a country where agriculture is by and large labor intensive and majority of your workforce is dependent on agriculture 30 to 40 percentage saving in the labor cost that is actually very huge improvement this will create a huge improvement in the income as well as lives of rural India which is by and large dependent on the agricultural field you just imagine all these things can be achieved by introducing a micro irrigation program in this country and Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sinjai Yojana with a declared objective of per drop more crop is a well defined scheme for introducing micro irrigation into the fields of our country that means we are going for a paradigm shift so if you know all these facts and stories behind introduction of Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sinjai Yojana rather than the ministry the implementing ministry what is the financial allocation if you are mugging up these kind of stuffs and going for examination your questions will not be premised upon any of those facts particularly then it will be very difficult for you to answer in the prelims and do understand there is no different approach required for prelims and mains if you are mugging it up if you are understanding it properly 
If you are mugging it up rather, then that will create problems in your mains, especially because you won't have conceptual clarity which is required from you in mains examination. So taking Pradhan Mandri Krishi Senjai Yojana as an example, how to learn other schemes, you have to understand from this particular video. So you must go a little bit deeper into the requirements of such a scheme in this country and what sense it will be it will create a better India if you know this fact along with mugging up all these details about the scheme then that will make your preparation more effective and your preparation will be more efficient so this is the way which you are supposed to learn about a scheme in spirit is taking this as an opportunity to introduce before you what is the requirement for learning government schemes from your classrooms so we are introducing a program from 9th april 2018 that is from next monday and there in this program through this program we will be introducing all the relevant government schemes before you in a detailed and analytical manner which will help you to recollect it and memorize it during your prelims examination so we are inviting you to join the program and know about all the government schemes and most relevant topics from India yearbook which will add maximum value to your preparations for prelims 2018. Thank you.